We're going to go over and apply some theorems on transforms, on Laplace transforms. The first one we're going to go over is called the first shifting theorem or first translation theorem. Okay, here's how the theorem works. We're not going to give the proof of the theorem in this video, but if the transform of some function, f of t, is equal to capital F of s, then the transform of the function e to the at, f of t, is f of S minus A. And what this means, first you transform f of t. And when you multiply f of t by e to the at, all you're doing is you're shifting the s down by an amount a. And that's all you're doing. Here's an example. The transform of t to the power n, where n is a positive integer, is equal to n factorial over s to the power n plus 1. So, for example, the transform of t squared is 2 factorial divided by s to the power 2 plus 1. So, it'll be 2 over s cubed. This is the transform of t squared. Okay. The transform of e to the power 4t times t squared can be obtained by shifting this transform by an amount 4 down. So you change s to s minus 4. So it'll be like this, 2 over, and wherever you see an s, change it to s minus 4 cubed. And that's the transform of e to the 40 times t squared. What if you're doing the transform of e of t squared e to the power minus 40? Then what you do is the this s here becomes s minus minus 4, which is s plus 4. So it'll be 2 over s plus 4 cubed. And you don't have to do this transform. You can apply this shifting theorem to uh, do it from t squared. If we wanted the transform of t, this is like t to the power 1, its transform would be 1 factorial, divided by s to the power 1 plus 1, which is 2. So it's 1 over s squared. So if somebody asks for the transform of e to the 6t times t, or t e to the 6t, all you do is you shift this s down by 6. So it will be 1 over s minus 6 squared, and that's it. The transform of e to the 2t cos 6t. When you're finding this, first you find the transform of cosine 6t. Here it is. This is equal to s divided by s squared plus 6 squared, which is s over s squared plus 36. So for this one, we're going to shift s down by 2. So this one here, equals every s occurrence here will be changed to s minus 2. So it's s minus 2 s minus 2 squared plus 36. Next we're going to do the transform of t times f of t. This is equal to minus the derivative of the transform of f of t. And we'll do an example of this in a minute. If we're doing the transform of, let's say, t e to the 3t, well, we could use the first shifting theorem to do this by finding the transform of t and then shifting s down by 3. So the transform of t 
is 1 over s squared. And because it's being multiplied by e to the 3t, the transform of t e to the 3t is obtained by shifting this s down. I'll write it again. t e to the 3t. You shift this s down by 3, so it'll be 1 over s minus 3 squared. And that's using the first shifting theorem. But we can also use this theorem here to figure out the transform of t f of t. When we used the first shifting theorem, we treated t as the function f. But this time we're going to treat the function f as e to the 3t. So the transform of e to the 3t is 1 over s minus 3. And what this theorem tells us to do is take the derivative and multiply it by a minus. The derivative of 1 of s minus 3 so 1 over s minus 3 prime is equal to minus 1 over s minus 3 to the power 2. How did I do this? Well, you can write this as s minus 3 to the power minus 1. And use the chain rule. Its derivative will be minus 1 s minus 3 to the power minus 2 times 1, which is what I have here. Minus 1 over s minus 3 squared let's go back to the theorem this theorem tells us that whenever you're transforming t times f of t transform f of t so you get f of s and then take the derivative of f of s that means f prime of s and then multiply it by a minus here's the derivative multiply this by a minus so the transform of t times e to the 3t is minus times this which is 1 over s minus 3 squared we got the same result earlier by using the first shifting theorem so we have two options of doing this the general form of this theorem is this the transform of t to the power n times any function f of t is going to be minus 1 to the power n times the nth derivative of s f with respect to s so this is f n of s this means the derivative of f the nth with respect to s that's what this is so it's if you have t to the power 2 here you take the second derivative of the transform and multiply it by minus 1 squared which is 1 if you have t cubed minus 1 cubed is minus 1 times the third derivative of the transform of this function. So the main thing is to find the transform of this function and then apply this theorem. Let's put this in a box. The other one also. But the, this one is a special case of this general theorem. This is power n and this is power 1. Next, we're going to cover the convolution theorem. Let f and g be two functions of t. The convolution of f and g is f star g of t. It's the integral of f of u times g of t minus u with respect to u between 0 and t. This special integral is called the convolution of f and g. We could switch f and g. We could make it g of u and f of t minus u, and it'll be g star f. So what's so special about the convolution? What's special about it is there's a theorem called the convolution theorem. Okay, let us call the transform of f of t, we'll call it capital F. The transform of g of t, we'll call this one capital G. So, the special thing about the convolution is that the transform of the convolution of f star g of t is just the products of these two transforms. So it'll be f of s times g of s. You might wonder, well, what's so special about this? Why is this even... Why do we even need to know? Well, the convolution theorem is a very powerful way to actually invert. So the inverse of 
a product of two transforms is equal to the convolution. For example, if you're inverting a long fraction, like this one, for example, if somebody asks you to invert this, 3s divided by s squared plus 1 times s squared plus 4. One of the ways to invert it is to use the convolution theorem. So break up this big transform here. I would break it up like this. I would uh, write 3. I would make it as 3 over s squared plus 1 times s over s squared plus 4. So I would think of this as one of the transforms and this as the other transform. And it doesn't matter which one you call f, which one you call g. What's important is how you break it up. So the inverse transform of this bracket here will be the inverse transform of the product of these. So we'll call one of these f of s and the other one g of s. So I'll call f of s 3 over s squared plus 1. If f of s is this, then this is the transform of what function? And the answer is, it's the transform of f of t. Okay, this is s squared plus 1 squared. The 3 is just a number. I'm going to take it out. So it will be 3. And then since this is equal to 1, this would be sine t. For the second one, g of s, g of s is s over s squared plus 4. This has the form of s over s squared plus k squared, which is the transform of a cosine, where k is 2. k is 2, because k squared is 4. So this will be cosine 2t. Equals g of t. Let's put this in a box. This is the transform of this. So I'm going to say the inverse transform of this is cosine 2t. So inverse equals. Okay. So we have f of t equals 3 sine t. g of t equals cosine 2t. The inverse of this large fraction here will be the convolution of these two functions. It will be f star g of t. And by the way, you can switch these f and g. So that means we need to integrate. This is the integral from 0 to t. And here's the convolution. It's f of u times g of t minus u. Integral from 0 to t. Here's f. So it'll be 3 sine u. You replace t here by u. Times g of t minus u. So this t here will be cosine of 2 t minus u. With respect to u. Find this integral. And that will be the inverse of this large transform here. Let's go back to the business of switching f and g. We could have called this one g and this one f, and it doesn't matter as far as the con convolution is concerned. Why would it be important to switch here? You're finding cosine of, you're finding g of t minus u. So, we're finding cosine of 2 t minus u. If we switch f and g, then our f would be f of t equals cosine 2t and our g of t would be 3 sine t. So when you do the convolution this time, it'll be integral from 0 to t and it'll be f of u. So it'll be cosine 2u times g of t minus u. So it'll be times 3 sine of t minus u. Du. This will give you the exact same result as before. So you might want to pick which function you want to call f.
and which function you want to call g the end result will be the same it really doesn't matter which one you pick but you might want to think about that okay we're done with this problem we have inverted this transform but there's another way to invert it let's look at the bracket i'm going to rewrite what's in the bracket i'll rewrite it here so it's inside the bracket we're trying to invert this 3s over s squared plus 1 times s squared plus 4. Another way to do it, which we went over in a separate video, is to use partial fractions. Okay, so you write, you break this up as a fraction over s squared plus 1 plus a fraction over s squared plus 4. This is a quadratic, so the numerator here will be as plus b. This is a quadratic, so the numerator here will be cs plus k. I'm not using the letter d because it's for derivative. e is for exponential, f is for function, and so is g. Once you break this up, you've separated them and then you invert each of these separately and you'll end up with the same result as you would by using the convolution theorem. So this is the transform from earlier and we're inverting it. And uh, equals inverse of this. Then all you have to do is find a, b, c, k. You have two choices. Would you like to do an integral like this, which is this one for this particular example one of these integrals or would you rather solve a system of four equations linear equations in four unknowns a b c k whichever way you do it that will give you the inverse transform of this